Hello and welcome to Ozpol Explained. I am your curly head host, David, and today I have a special guest joining me all the way from South Australia via Zoom. So, give us a quick little introduction and a brief physical description for accessibility purposes. I'm David Spears. Uh, it's great to be on the podcast today. I'm sitting here in my office in South Australia's Parliament House uh, with a, a bookshelf behind me, and I am uh, wearing a light blue shirt and have short blonde hair. Wonderful. Uh, I also have a bookcase behind me. Yours looks a lot more technical than mine. I have just political biographies. Yours looks a lot more interesting than <laughs> mine. I haven't read anything in, on my bookshelf. It's simply there for decoration. Don't tell anyone that I have not read most of these books, but that is the case for anyone who owns a bookcase. So let's dive right in. You are the leader of the opposition of South Australia. Um, so for those with little understanding of parliament, what is the leader of the opposition? Yes, I've been the leader of the opposition here in South Australia for just over nine months now. Uh, the opposition in the Westminster system of democracy uh, holds the government to account. It's the party that doesn't have the numbers to form government. It doesn't have the numbers to uh, have the power to change the state. But it uh, is the second largest party, uh, the party which... Um, uh, is there to scrutinise and challenge the government of the day, uh, the party that's there to come up with an alternate vision and policy agenda for the state. Uh, so it's uh, a really important role being the opposition leader uh, and a, um, a, an opportunity to ensure that the, there is a, a level of scrutiny on the government, but also, as importantly, uh, different ideas being put forward as to areas that we should focus on in the state. Sometimes it gets characterised as a, a negative role. Uh, that is true in part, but I really do try to be very positive in my role and talk about positive ideas for South Australia. A lot of people's idea of it is that you are opposing the government, you're disagreeing. Um, does the opposition always disagree with the government? No, we definitely don't. I was trying to think um, earlier today how how often we do oppose the government. I don't have an exact figure, but I would suggest it would only be 20% of the time, maybe not even that. Uh, you know, most things uh, that involve the administration of the state of South Australia uh, pass through Parliament, uh, and most of those things are agreed on. Uh, in any given bill, we might make uh, some suggested amendments, often in uh, consultation with the community or stakeholder representative groups, uh, but by and large, uh, the opposition and the government do agree on most things, certainly a majority of things. We might frame things differently. We might have a different um, uh, way of, of, of considering uh, how the state should be run. We might have a different values base, but uh, by and large, we agree on a huge amount of things. So would it be fair to say that you sort of... Uh generally kind of agree on principle on many things it's sort of the specifics that you are working through with maybe a slightly different idea that would be correct and uh, look we have a different values base uh, as the liberal party than labor we come from a different position on many things we represent different people in the community um often however uh we we still want what's best for the state of South Australia. Our interpretation of that might be slightly different uh, than the government uh, at this point in time. And our areas of emphasis might be slightly different. We might place more importance on, uh, on certain approaches and, and policies than others. But the, most of the time we, we do agree. And uh, of course, that doesn't get media attention because that's not very interesting. What is this idea of an alternative view, alternative government that the opposition is trying to put forward? So I position myself as the alternate premier of South Australia. I am the, uh, at this point in time, uh, the, the other guy for the job, I suppose. And so I'm both presenting myself uh, as an individual leader, as uh, being um, an alternate, but also my team and my party my shadow cabinet uh, and the Liberal Party as being uh, alternative, um, an alternative uh, to the Labour government. So we have different ways of providing that opposition. We have a diff different ways of 
putting those ideas into the public domain. We use the parliament quite a bit through question time where we will ask the government and particularly uh, senior ministers questions about how they're doing their job. But we'll also use the media to put other ideas out there and to challenge the government. Uh, We will use community events and and community meetings and forums uh, to uh, get our message out there and to co-design ideas with the community um, and and key stakeholders, depending on what the issue is. So there's different ways of doing opposition. We use the parliament, we use media, we use the community, we use representative bodies. uh, And of course, they use us uh, to get their ideas uh, some um, some traction as well. You mentioned shadow ministers. Uh, for those who are not super familiar with Parliament, what is a shadow minister? Um, and do they always wear black? They certainly don't wear black. I actually encourage my team to uh, be as colourful as possible in what they wear. Not too much, but uh, uh, I want them to stand out. Uh, they um, A shadow minister, is, uh, essentially, um, in, in the title, it, it shadows... Uh, their ministerial opponent. So uh, the ministry, the cabinet, uh, which runs the state, has a, has a, is chaired by the premier. Uh, but then there's a minister for health who looks after health policy and it projects. There's a minister for transport and infrastructure. There's a minister for child protection, a minister for tourism, a minister for primary industries and agriculture. And, and, and there's 15 uh, ministers around the South Australian cabinet table. Uh, there are more in some jurisdictions across the nation and, and less in others. I think there's about 23 in New South Wales. I have got a shadow ministry, uh, which keeps an eye on the ministers, uh, provides ideas in those policy areas and uh, and works to hold the government to account, but again, uh, put forward those alternate ideas, that alternate vision for the state. My shadow ministry has 14 shadow ministers plus myself as the, as the chair, as the leader, and that's the same number as the as the Labour government has. So uh, I, I, I essentially shadow the Premier, but I'm also the shadow, shadow Minister for Environment. And that's because environment and conservation uh, is a driving passion of mine. And I was South Australia's Environment Minister for four years before assuming the leadership. Uh, so uh, I, I try to match my shadow ministers up with uh, portfolios and policy areas that are of interest and passion to them. As sort of like leader of the opposition is basically sort of like a shadow premier. What is the sort of specific role of the leader of the opposition and how does it differ from premier in this sort of framework? I guess, although I don't have the same powers, I don't have access to the finances of the state to drive forward my party's agenda. I certainly have significant influence that comes with the role. It's not necessarily personal influence that's vested in David Spears, the person, uh, but the role, the leader of well, it's actually now the full title is leader of His Majesty's loyal opposition. It is vested with significant influence uh, and has the uh, opportunity to represent um, the state at a range of ceremonial functions. Uh, it has the uh, obviously the opportunity to lead question time, to lead parliamentary debates. Uh, I am the lead spokesperson on. Uh, anything that the opposition does, I might defer and delegate to shadow ministers. But at the end of the day, uh, the buck stops with me. Now, I will debate the premier, usually in a, a very pleasant and civilised way. Uh, I will attend many, many events every month with the premier. Uh, uh, Again, um, significant events in the state, uh, Anzac morning, uh, Australia Day events. Um, uh, there, is, there is a, a significant ceremonial role for the leader of the opposition, uh, as well as a, a working role around policy and scrutiny. There's definitely this perception that, uh, you know, the person who wins government in the lower house, that's it. They're the ones who get to control the agenda. Um, So the opposition naturally does not have the numbers to sort of outvote the government in the lower house. Um, But the lower house is not the only chamber. There's uh, legislative council as well, or Senate federally. What can the opposition achieve in parliament, basically? How do they use their numbers in the two chambers uh, to put forward their policy agendas when the government controls one of those chambers. 
I think a lot of people think the opposition is powerless and can't do very much, but it is a really important role and, and it, it can um, put significant public pressure uh, on uh, the government of the day to change policies and uh, to change the way it's running the state. We can do that through things like the media and, and, and public um a public protest, but we can also use the parliament to do that. We can put pressure on through question time. We can uh, we can move motions of no confidence in the government. It doesn't necessarily mean we'll win those things, but it does put significant pressure on the government to reconsider uh, the approaches that it might be taking on a particular issue. In the sense of voting, well, we don't have the numbers in the House of Assembly, the lower house in South Australia, and that's why we are not the government and why I'm not the Premier. However, in the upper house, uh, it is a, a much more fluid situation. Labour, uh, the party of government in South Australia, doesn't have uh, the numbers there. So we can work with the crossbenchers. The Greens in South Australia, we have two uh, members of parliament who are part of the SA Best party uh, and then we've got a One Nation member as well. We can work together with those people to potentially block government legislation um, or amend it, try and make it better. Uh, talk to the community, talk to stakeholders about what they'd like to see in particular legislation and use the numbers that we have in the upper house to affect change. Now the government won't always agree with those changes we make but if they don't, their legislation risks falling over and disappearing into oblivion, never to see the light of day again. So it's in the interest of the government uh, in the upper house to negotiate. And of course, a very short time ago, I was a minister. Uh, and as mentioned earlier, the, the Minister for Environment and Water in South Australia. And so I was negotiating uh, with people in the upper house uh, to get my legislation through. So I know what that's like. It requires a bit of compromise. It requires a bit of give and take, but it probably leads overall to better legislation. So it's fair to summarise that Parliament is a lot more collaborative uh, amongst different views and ideas than people realise. It certainly can be. It certainly can be. And look, even in question time, which is the, uh, the real epicentre of activity uh, in any given parliamentary day, there is a lot of... Um, there is a lot of bravado and noise in there, but equally, I often chat across the uh, across the the room to the premier about things, and uh, he and I get on quite well. There is a lot of camaraderie in there. We've talked a lot about different ways the opposition holds the government to account and helps shapes policy. Uh, are there any other ideas or ways that they can manage to do this? One other way is the, the use of parliamentary committees. We've got two types of committees in South Australia, uh, standing committees, which sort of exist forever, uh, the Economic and Finance Committee, uh, the Natural Resources Committee, which looks at environmental issues, uh, the Social Affairs Committee, which looks at um, more social issues, and, and there's, there's the Aboriginal Lands Committee. Uh, there's, there's five or six of those. And then there are select committees which bubble up uh, on agreement um, of Parliament, and they have to be voted on, but on particular issues. Uh, in very early in my time in government, I was on the e-cigarette select committee. Uh, these committees, whether they're standing committees or select committees, tend to have a, a group of um, MPs on them. Usually the government controls the numbers in the case of standing committees in South Australia, not necessarily in the case of select committees, and almost never in the case of committees which are constituted in the upper house in South Australia. Almost never does the government have the numbers there. Um, so those committees delve into issues. Uh, they do inquiries and they do very deep analysis of issues of interest, issues of concern. Parliament might refer an issue for investigation uh, to a committee. Uh, a committee might investigate a particular government bill uh, that is perhaps controversial or needs a bit more in-depth look at before it comes back into the parliament for a vote. And it may come back with a whole range of suggested amendments from that committee. Committees draw witnesses in from the community. They can, in some cases, compel witnesses to attend uh, and they can draw out evidence 
and then they'll provide a report to Parliament on their particular inquiry. In the case of a select committee, that would be a report that is just for that committee uh, in terms of that the, the terms of reference of that committee, focusing in on that particular topic. In the case of the standing committees, they would produce four, five, six, seven reports a year on particular areas of inquiry. So if we just reflect back to 2015 with that e-cigarette committee, that's vaping as it's referred to these days. That was something new. It was a little bit confusing. We wanted to make sure that we had the appropriate regulation in place to uh, ensure that vaping was occurring safely in South Australia, if that was at all possible. Uh, so we referred it off to the, the e-cigarette select committee uh, for a couple of months. The members of that committee got together, they took witnesses and, uh, and, and gathered evidence and then presented the parliament with a range of recommendations on the governance and regulation of vaping. And uh, that then became law uh, with bipartisan support. Uh, so it's uh, it's an interesting area. It allows the parliament to dig deep into particular issues. And most of the time it works pretty well. So basically, everyone who's elected to parliament, regardless of their political party, has an opportunity to get involved, collaborate and work collectively on discussing and shaping policy. That's correct. And those are normally, uh, well, in fact, almost always uh, ministers are and, and the leadership of parties are excluded from committees. So I haven't been in a committee for a very long time because I spent four years as a minister and now I'm the leader of the party. So it tends to be for, uh, uh, these committees tend to be constituted by members of the back bench, uh, the more junior members of, of parliament, and that that's not using a, a disrespectful term, uh, but they've got more time. And also it's seen that it gives them more of a voice, which normally might be uh, reserved for ministers or leaders. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time. Do you have any closing remarks or anything you'd like to add? No, that's great, David. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to you and your audience. And I uh, encourage everyone to continue to explore their interests in politics through uh, your platform that you've created here. Thank you. Thank you so much to David Spears for his time. As a fellow David, I appreciate that immensely. Thank you for tuning in. If you've gotten this far, please tell me your favorite David that you know. Uh, is it me? Is it David Spears? Is it another David? Who knows? Please share, comment, subscribe, all these sorts of things. Thank you so much to my supporters on Patreon. And if you'd like to learn more about Parliament, just check out the other episodes that I have. I have many. That's all for now, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>